Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. 13 hours, 12 hours, power cuts. The longest since two decades. Why? Well, simple. The people responsible just didn't do their job. How did they not do their job? After all, the COVID pandemic put a lot of debt in this country's resources. However, that's an excuse all these authorities are milking too much these days. We have the current power crisis because the so-called people and the Public's Util uh, Public Utilities Commission, the so-called stellar engineers at the Ceylon Electricity Board, and the rest at the Energy Ministry didn't anticipate such a crisis and didn't do their planning and their due diligence. And on top of it, the Finance Minister, Basil Rajpaksa, was delusional that he too didn't take preventative measures when there but enough and more information to plan ahead. Give me some time. I have been warned in the government about this uh, crisis, forthcoming crisis, as early as February 2021. I have submitted 11 cabinet papers, mainly about the forthcoming energy crisis. Unfortunately, Finance Minister was not ready to admit that there is a crisis. Then I explained that we are heading towards a huge financial crisis. Soon after my speech, Minister of Finance, newly appointed Minister of Finance, uh, Basil Rajapaksa, told the parliamentary group that there is no such financial crisis. Minister Gammampili is seeing crocodiles in the teacup. Right? There is a, there is a sh uh, shortage in uh, foreign currencies at the moment because of a manipulation done by several bank officers. I am going to solve this within two weeks. I mean, the incompetency level is so much that the CEB even cannot say how much power is consumed from its own grid to determine a blanket power cut, which would help you and me, right, to plan out the day. Here are the power cuts. Every day we are going to cut around three hours, four hours, five hours, from this time to this time. So you know exactly how to plan your day. The Public Utilities Commission, the CEB, everybody comes with charts and say, oh, look, the demand, this and that. And they, these engineers can't fathom and come and do a simple calculation to tell, okay, this is the amount we need to cut. And this is the time period we need to cut. So that it would not inc inc inconvenience the people on a daily basis. I mean, just imagine, when you see the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission, I, by myself, when I see him, I scream at the television. Why? He just creates mental stress. And the best joke is, he comes one day, says, oh, we have done everything to sort out the power crisis. Next week, no power cuts, or, you know, we will reduce the power cuts. Fuel is there. The very next day, it's a dark day for the Public Utilities Commission, blah, blah, blah. Every person in this industry, from the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission to the minor worker, knows very well to blame everyone else, but never takes a shred of responsibility in prepping the grid for future shocks. As you know very well, Sri Lanka's power generation is mainly based on hydropower. That's what we've been settling for over four decades. And the biggest blackout back in the mid-90s led to Sri Lanka seeking alternative power methods. This is where the thermal power concept came into effect in Sri Lanka, which later led to the construction of several thermal power plants. The latest is the Norachule power plant, constructed uh, during President Mahindra Rajapaksa's uh, last channel, which puts around 900 megawatts of power on the grid. And if that was not there, buddy, it would have been in the, in the dark for more than 24 hours for days. If we are going to find solutions at the moment, we got to think at least beyond 10 years ahead. So the answers we are proposing needs to be able to withstand whatever the crisis we might face beyond. Energy trading is a concept prevalent in many parts of the, parts of the world, especially uh, within countries that share borders. Something Sri Lanka can really think about as we move forward due to our proximity to India. Many countries in Europe and North America are doing this already. They have a grid established between the two nations, and when there is a deficit of power, they borrow from either party. 
Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also commented on this uh, matter when addressing the recent BIMSTEC summit. The mainstay for better integration, better trade, uh, better people-to-people -people relations between us is better connectivity. We cannot overemphasize this. It is also time now to go beyond discussions on electric grid interconnectivity and to operationalize it. The same way, it is also important to set up a legal framework for increasing road connectivity. Well, India is currently the third largest electricity producer globally and generates over 393 gigawatts. India currently provides uh, power to Bhutan, Bangladesh and Nepal. In addition, there is a proposal for a future underwater connection to Sri Lanka uh, from southern India, which could be a way forward uh, for a nation like Sri Lanka. I know there is a lot of uh, geopolitical implications that you need to think about, so that's a conversation we need to have openly uh, as a nation before we move into uh, anything that would harm our, our sovereignty beyond, uh, beyond um, in order to solve one crisis, we can't fall into another. Well, joining me now is the Deputy General Manager, Business and Operational Strategy, uh, Strategy at the Ceylon Electricity Board and the Chairman of the CEB Employees Union, uh, Noel Priyanta. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. I really appreciate it. Now, the biggest question that each and every one of us uh, has is that why is the CEB so ineffective? Because it is evident, no, judging by your action, that you don't have any solution for the current crisis. All that what we see is that you keep uh, passing the blame to everyone, the government, Sipeco, and everyone else. It's everybody else's fault but yours. And we know that you keep coming in front of uh, media, clearly lying to the people, making promises that you can't keep. A CB, uh, along with the whole plethora of engineers there, is so incompetent that you all can't even figure out the amount of average power consumption in in the country that you would be uh, that would enable you to provide a blanket power cut schedule so people can get on with their day-to-day -day -day activities your organization's incompetency is clearly affecting our nation so what is the reason for this yes my <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity given Yes, I agree what, what you say, but uh, if you go to the past, we were a country, we were given 24, 24 hour power uninterrupted. So, but at that time, we have given our proposals to the country and the policy makers. The major issue is lack of clear decision making on time. Those are the main reasons in this country, whatever the issues, we are not taking a decision on time. Whether it's a power plant, whether it's a what is it, what, what they are doing, not taking decisions on time and implementation. So those are the main reasons behind this power crisis. We already informed all the authorities, but not a single power plant built until from 2014. The last plant was Norochole, uh, third, third, fourth, third phase. So at that time, we were given our tariff reduction as well. 2014, we, we had a tariff revision that was reduction. So because of the low cost power generation added to the system. But sorry to say, now after that, there's not a single power plant built in this nation. I mean, I understand, but it's more of a blame game, isn't it? I mean, at least do you all have any solutions for this crisis? Yes, we do. As senior engineers, we proposed to increase the renewable energy additions to the country. But there are legal issues and practical issues. But these governments took almost seven years to clear that issue. There's a small comma as per the lawyers, legal intervention. But still, up till today, there's no solution to that legal issue. What they have to do, the small amendment to the act to enable renewable to be added to the system. So those are the issues. Now, Mr. Priyanta, when we speak to many energy specialists, one of the recurrent claims uh, is that uh, CB trade unions are hampering uh, modern-day solutions uh, like uh, renewable energy being implemented in the country. This was also mentioned uh, during a recent meeting with the Prime Minister. So, 
what kind of steps have the CB, has the CB uh, taken to ensure that uh, renewable energy projects are smoothly implemented and uh, there won't be a crisis like this in the near future? Yes, I agree. But in the, basically, in the global scenario also, general conventional engineers, they don't like renewables. Because always electrical engineers would like to have a single biggest power plant which will easily control. Basically, conventional power plants are very easy to control, like Noro Chole 900 megawatt. Whereas, if there are scattered power plants around the country, like solar, rooftop, everywhere, then conventional engineers, it's difficult to accept this new technology. So, you need a clear mind to absorb. I agree with you. Most of the engineers, they don't like renewables in CB because of the system operation issues. But modern society, modern world, they are going for renewables. So, we have to think about positive to absorb more and more renewables. You know, until 2020, we added almost 750 megawatt renewables, which is solar, wind and hydro. So, with that, we managed to get 2020 1860 gigawatt hours to the system at a fairly low cost, rupees 15 rupees average. So, this is the future for Sri Lanka. Today, we are experiencing power crisis because of fuel issue. Because we have power plants now. Norachole, Kalnitis, Sapukaskanda. But the issue is the lack of fuel. Because of the fuel issue, we are having more extended power cuts today. So, solution is our country should move forward with the more and more renewables, which is free as during running times. I mean, hopefully, let's, uh, let's, let's start solving this problem. Um, the chairman of the CEB Employees Union, Noel Priyanda, thank you very much. Let's take a short commercial break. On the other side, we'll once again visit the idea of the IMF and whether this is the right move for Sri Lanka. Be right back.